This video is brought to you by the Edinburgh Watch Company, who specialise in the buying and selling of fine Swiss luxury watches in the beautiful city of Edinburgh and online at edinburghwatchcompany.co.uk. Hello and welcome to the Watch Guys. This week, something very special has arrived. Look, I just picked it up from my local Patek dealer, Francis in Bournemouth. This is a limited edition Patek Philippe. They don't come around that often, but when they do, it's worth talking about. And this one has been particularly controversial. That's right, folks. This week's watch is the Patek Philippe 6007. That's right, I can hardly believe it. I got the call only two weeks ago to say that I was one of the lucky few that are getting this limited edition watch. This is the first limited edition Patek that I've ever had. Hopefully it won't be the last. Hint, hint, Nautilus, 45th anniversary. And I'm really excited to share with you the unboxing and really take you through my first impressions of this very important watch. But first of all, a wristwatch check. And under the blue jumper this week, I have another new arrival and another blue watch. It is the Tudor Black Bay 58 Navy. That's right, folks, the brand new Tudor, the Black Bay with a blue dial and a blue bezel. Hot off the press. I was gonna make this week's episode about this watch, but then I thought, well, hang on, isn't there gonna be a gazillion videos on this watch. It's relatively affordable. There's a lot more of them around. I figured that every man and his dog would be reviewing this watch on YouTube. And you know what? I was right. So I'll give you a brief glimpse of this watch right now. Early doors, I am loving it. It fits perfectly on the wrist. It's got a 70s Tudor Submariner vibe. That silvery blue, mm, I just love it. There will be an episode coming in the future that features it but I think I'll take the opportunity to take you through my whole Tudor collection rather than just focusing on the new Navy. This week is gonna be a full first look and overview of this new Patek Philippe Calatrava. Is that okay with you? Good, I thought it might be. Let's get on with it. And here it is folks, in the flesh. I've not just regurgitated a press release. The 6007A was announced in June 2020. Obviously we had the loss of Baselworld and almost certainly this watch would have been announced there. But in the first of a series of announcements from Patek, the 6007 suddenly appeared. And actually it was a very divisive announcement. There were many people that really didn't like it. There were lots of people that thought it looked cheap. There were lots of people that thought it didn't look like a Patek Philippe. And there were lots of people that thought it looked way too similar to a number of other watches on the market. Our friends on the Scottish Watches podcast compared it to a Citizen Eco Drive, and I can see where they're coming from. This is a 40 millimeter Calatrava, which in itself is quite unusual because they usually only go up to 39 millimeters. It's in stainless steel, which means it's much rarer than the precious metal variants. It also features a completely different style of dial, and it's on a calfskin strap, not crocodile, and there's no real fancy clasp either. There's only a thousand of these have been produced and it's to celebrate the completion of Patek's new HQ. What I can tell you immediately is it's very light, it's quite thin, and actually the pictures do not do this watch justice. For starters the strap is a completely different colour to the pictures, it matches the tone of the dial perfectly, and the dial itself has a lot more depth than it first appeared. We've got white gold hour markers and hands and also both of those are luminous. Again, quite unusual for a Calatrava. And in fact, if you look at the dial closely, it's very reminiscent of the design and structure of the 6006 with the black dial. The movement in this one is the Patek 324SC, which is the real workhorse of Patek Philippe. It's used in at least 60 of their models, including a lot of the Nautilus and Aquanauts. As with all 324 movements, it's got a 45 hour power reserve, and this one is water resistant to only 30 meters. Not that you're gonna wear something like this in the water, especially on a calfskin strap. So since this is a brand new watch, there's no real history to it, but why on earth has it been made? Well, it's to celebrate the completion of Patek's new 600 million Swiss franc headquarters just outside of Geneva. 
This building's taken five years to complete. This new mega block brings all of Patek's ateliers under one roof. So this is Patek getting ready for the future. I would tell you a lot more about the history of Patek buildings, but honestly, does anyone care? Does anyone really care about all the office buildings that companies come from? I'm not sure I do. That's why this to me is a little bit of a strange special edition. Now Patek do have a history of producing special edition watches to commemorate buildings or salons. In 1997, to celebrate Patek's last building in the Plan Le Wat district, Patek came up with two versions of their Pagoda models, the 4900R for the ladies and the 5500G for the men. And actually, I quite like them. They've got a lot of old world charm about them. And then in 2006, Patek decided to revamp its salons and therefore they brought out two special editions, one based on the Gondolo range. This was the 5105P and then also a Calatrava, the 5565A. All of these special editions were made in far fewer quantities than the 1000 that this latest special edition has been created in. So that's why this new watch exists. Now let's go into Unboxovision and take you through a full unboxing of this new limited edition watch. So first thing to say is that even though this is a limited edition watch, you just get the standard old box. As with all Patek's, it's pretty massive. It's encased in a large cardboard outer. You've got a front opening piece of cardboard and then you've got this lovely Patek Philippe branded dust cover around the wooden box itself. Now once you remove that you've got a sumptuous leather wallet and inside that you've got the Calibre 324 movement instruction manual telling you how to operate the watch perfectly. And then on the other side, we've also got a piece of information about collecting Pateks and about the museum. And most importantly for a Patek Philippe, you then have the certificate of origin, which gives you information about the reference number, the type of watch that you've got, and shows that it is registered with Patek Philippe, which is especially important when you want them to ring you up and tell you about new limited editions that they want to offer you. This though being a special limited edition Patek means you get a second certificate and this attestation tells you that it is a limited series of 1000 pieces and the reference number. Then you gently unravel the dust sheet around the beautiful walnut wood jewellery box that all Pateks come in. It's not themed at all for this limited edition. Personally, I would have liked to have seen a blue version of this box to go with this new blue watch. That would have been a particularly special touch, I think. The 40th anniversary Nautilus, for example, came in a special cork box that harked back to the original box that it came in. But with this one, nothing special has been done to the packaging whatsoever. And there it is a beautiful blue stainless steel watch sitting inside its fantastic Patek wooden jewellery box. So now let's take a look at this watch in detail. Why is this watch so interesting? Why am I so excited to own one? Well, it's simple, isn't it? It's a limited edition Patek Philippe, people. Come on. How many times do I have to say this? This is special. It might be about a building. It's not exactly a momentous milestone, but it is still limited and it is still special. And actually, it is utterly unique. Now, let's talk about the controversial design and the fact that a lot of people think this is very un -Patek like I happen to disagree. I think it works exceptionally well, but I do understand where they're coming from. First of all, it's in trendy blue. Now blue is a thing right now. There are many, many different blue models coming out. A lot of special editions, a lot of mainstream models. And so it's quite surprising in a way that Patek has jumped on that bandwagon. After all, Tudor has just done it. And actually this looks very similar in design and coloration to the brand new Jarge Le Coultre Memovox Timer, which looks like this. And also the brand new Vacheron Constantine 56, which looks like this. Do you see what I mean? Both have got these inner and outer circles. They're both blue and they both have a lot of the nuances around the hour markers. So I'm not sure whether the guys up in Geneva have been sort of looking over at each other's desks and copying their homework, but certainly you can't deny we've got three brand new watches in June this year, all of them the same colour, but crucially all of them with very similar designs. And if you look at the price difference between them, 
This Patek Philippe costs a little over £21,000. The Vacheron Constantine costs £21,000. And the JLC costs £14,000. You've got this polished stainless steel case and the dial itself is a silvery blue colour, even more silvery blue than the Tudor. There's also different reflective surfaces going on. The hour markers are ringed in white gold. The hands are white gold, but painted white. And then you've got the seconds indicator in increments of five seconds all the way around the outside of the dial. It really is a genuinely unique piece. There's lots of reflections going on. The white gold glints as you turn it in your hand, and then that sort of guilloché carbon fibre effect uh, works really well just to give a little bit of depth and visual interest. We've got a very simple understated date wheel at the three o'clock position, but the thing that's getting the most attention at the moment is that sort of carbon fiber effect that sits right in the middle of the dial. You've got the familiar Calatrava cross on the crown. The strap itself is calfskin and it's color matched almost identically to the dial itself, which is a really difficult thing to do. It feels like a very simple fabric strap it's quite thin, and I have to say, I think it feels a little bit cheap. It does make it feel a lot more casual and a lot more sporty. Now let's have a look at the case back. Now, as with a lot of watches in this segment, obviously the case back and the movement is exposed, but unusually you've got laser etched in white on the sapphire crystal, new manufacturer, 2019. Why 2019? Well, it's because that's when the teams first started moving into the building. Now I'm sorry, Patek, but that is weak. I mean, honestly, who commemorates it when a, when a team first moves into the building? Surely when the building was fully completed, that's when you should have done it. And also it's 2020 now. So it does feel really weird in the middle of 2020 buying a watch which has got 2019 written on the back of it. I think that's a bit of an own goal actually. I'm not a huge fan of the engraving on the back of this watch and I'm especially not a fan of the wording. New manufacturer. It's just not sexy, is it? It just doesn't feel momentous enough. And although you've got the Calatrava cross also etched on the case back, for me, this sort of form of etching gets in the way and detracts from the ability to see the movement. What I've noticed wearing it on the wrist is that it's very light. You hardly even notice you're wearing it. It looks a lot more sporty and youthful than a Calatrava. And actually, it looks incredibly understated people will not know you are wearing a Patek Philippe when you've got this on. I mean, I could almost wear this in London, for goodness sake. So I have to say that despite the fact I'm not a huge fan of the case back, I'm not a huge fan of the wording of this limited edition, and the strap is a little bit disappointing, the watch itself, I'm a big, big fan of. I actually think I'm going to wear this a lot. It's not going to be stuck in a safe. It's the sort of watch you could quite easily wear every day. And because of its sporty nature, you don't have to save it up for a special formal occasion. So how on earth did I manage to get hold of this very special, hard to get hold of watch? Well, it was Patek themselves that made the decision. Obviously it's based on the number of models and the type of models that I got. So they know that I'm a good customer. They know that I'm a discreet customer. They know that I'm not a flipper and they know that I actually wear my watches. So that's got to have counted for me in a big way, but ultimately I'll never know what it was that specifically got me selected to own one of these. And I quite like that. It's a bit like it is with Ferrari. You're never entirely sure why you get given the special cars. And what I also didn't expect was how quickly it was going to arrive in my hands. It has only been two weeks. That just never happens. So that's it. This is the Patek Philippe Calatrava 6007A. If you like what we're doing on the channel, please subscribe if you haven't already. Subscriptions is the only way really that we can tell how well we're doing and also leave as many comments as possible on our episodes. We read all the comments and we reply to many of them. So it's fantastic to get involved with all of you. Also, please let us know what watches from my collection you'd like to see in the future. And in fact, what watches generally you'd like to see on the channel. So thank you very much for watching. There'll be another episode of The Watch Guys on next week.